Hello friends, welcome to Nigera Techies. This is our .NET Core 7 series. So part of this video, I'm going to explain rate limiting in middleware. So first we can see what is rate limiting. The rate limiting is the request limiter strategy. It is used for managing number of requests in our application. So this is the new feature introduced in .NET 7. It is applicable for all types of application. It could be an MVC or API or Blazor, okay? And rate limiting can help us to stop the kind of malicious bot activity. For explaining this concept, already I have created one web API application. So let me go to our middleware. Yeah, it's here. And here I listed out all the steps for the implementation. The first step is we have to configure our rate limiting policy in our middleware. Okay. So in this builder.service, I'm going to add add rate limiter. Here we have to specify the rate limiter type. First I'm choosing this add fixer window limiter. So basically we have four types. I will explain a little later. So we can start from this fixer window limiter. Okay. Here the first input is we have to provide the policy name. Next we can provide the options. The first parameter is window. So initially I'm providing 10 seconds. And the next one is permit limit. So number of requests we are allowing for the particular time window. One. And the next one is queue limit. So in case we are receiving a number of requests, so how many requests can hold in this queue? So I'm providing one and the processing order. Queue processing order. So hold to first, okay? Now I just defined my rate limiter. And the next thing is we have to call in our application for doing this one here I'm going to add use rate limiter okay now the policy configuration and enabling our rate limiter both the things are done so next we can call this rate limiter policy in our controller or else the controller action methods now let me go to our API controller here I can take this action method for using the rate limiter for any of the action method, we have to use the attribute name is enable rate limiting. Okay. Here we have to provide our policy name. The policy name already defined in our middleware section. So the rate right policy. So let me run this application. We can verify. Okay. So let me execute this one. So the first request it is return the data immediately if I'm trying once again it will wait for completing the particular time window so we provided 10 seconds so it will wait 10 seconds then only it will return the data okay so it will work like that and let me explain one more scenario so in this so in this window I am reducing into three seconds and this queue limit, I'm going to change this into zero. So that means it's not going to wait for the next request. So the first request, it is returning the data. Then I waited around the three seconds. Now I'm going to execute once again. So again, it is returning the data. Now I'm going to provide two requests within the seconds okay see now i am getting the error response 503 because we have provided the queue limit value is zero the first request is in process state so our window is three seconds so even it's not completed again i am trying to give one more request then it is returning the error message okay so in case if you want return some other error code that also we can configure so for doing this one, we have the option is called rejection status code. So I'm going to provide format one. Okay. So 
let me increase this one so first time it is returning the, sec the second time we are getting this uh, error code see the error code is 401 so that's what we have configured here and the next thing is so as of now I am just uh, added for our one of the action method the same thing we can apply for whole controller also okay so here I am going to create one more method for the testing purpose Okay, great. Uh, individually, I am not setting this rate limiter. I am enabled for the whole controller. Okay, that we can verify now. See now the rate limiter working for this weather forecast. Okay, it's a private. So let me exceed once again. So see our get name also there. So the first request it is returning the data. The second time it is returning the error. So if I'm waiting five seconds, if I'm trying to execute once again, so then it will return the data. That means our rate limiter working for our whole controller. Now what I'm going to do, so let me disable this rate limit for one of the action method. Okay. For doing this one, we have one more attribute is called disable rate limiting. So I'm going to apply for this get name action method. Disable rate limiting. Okay. Now we can verify one second. See now it is returning the data. I'm trying to exceed this one. Even I'm providing n number of requests, it is not throwing any any error because the rate limiting strategy is not applied for this action method. Okay. So the same thing I'm trying here. First time it is returning the data. Second time it is throwing any error. So after waiting the five seconds, that means our window time, again it is returning the data. Okay. So this is for our APA controller and action method. The rate, the same rate limiting concept is we can use for our minimal api also for the minimal api i'm going to create one basic minimal api here okay this is our one of the basic minimal api here i'm going to add for our rate limiter So we have this required rate limiting. So then we have to provide our policy name. So our policy name is already there. I'm going to execute once again. Okay, first time it is returning the data. The second time it is erroring. So after waiting five seconds, our window time is over. Now again it is returning the data okay so as of now we have completed only one type of rate limiter we have three more types so for enabling and disabling the rate limit so whatever demo we have seen the same thing only I added in this notes so first thing is we have to create our configuration for rate limiting so the properties we have to set in this configuration the third one is we need to enable this rate limiting in our application using this use rate limiting option and the final two are enabling rate limiting and disabling rate limiting okay that we have done so the next one is rate limiting algorithm so the rate limiter option extension class provide the following extension method for rate limiting the first one is fixed window that already we have seen and the second one is sliding window then token bucket the final one is concurrency so we can see one by one the first one is fixed window limiter for enabling this fixed window limiter we have to use the method of add fixed window limiter so that only we have done in our application see this one okay 
and the point is when the window time expires a new window time starts and the request limit is reset okay this is the process happening so we are setting this window time so once the window time is expires it is resetting the window time once again okay and the next one is sliding window limiter the sliding window limiter is similar to fixed window limiter but it is add the segments per window the window slides one segment on each segment interval okay so basically for calculating this segment interval is window time divided by segments per window okay so let me show you in this code we can create one more rate limiter so let me copy the whole code and the name okay we can provide a sliding policy okay sliding policy so instead of this add fixed window limiter we can use add sliding window limiter okay so the policy name we provided we have provided the four option so here we have one more option the option name is segment segment for window okay we can provide two so other checking and testing everything is same only we can copy the same policy name I'm going to apply for only this minimal API okay so let me rerun this application So after waiting some time, it is working fine. Okay. Under the next one is concurrency limiter. The concurrency limiter limits the number of concurrent requests. Okay. So the each request reduces the concurrency limit by one. So when your request complete, the limit is increased by one. Unlike the other request limiters that limit the total number of requests for the specific time period. So here basically we don't have the specific time period. Okay. So let me show you in the code. We can copy the same items. We can create one more new limiter. So this is for concurrency, right? So add concurrency limiter and we can change the policy also. So the concurrency limiter, there is no segment and also there is no specific time period. So we have provided the permit limit at a time one. So it will work accordingly. Okay. And the binding, let me copy this policy. We can apply for this our rate limiter. So we can test this one also. So initially it is returning the data. So if I'm giving the request continuously again, it is working fine way because we are just returning on string value. We don't have that much uh, logic here. Okay, so that's what it's returning quickly and uh, one request is completed automatically the next request is started. That's what the procedure is here and the final one is token bucket limiter. The token bucket limiter is similar to our sliding window limiter. So that also let me show in this code. The similar way I'm going to create one more limiter configuration here so this is the token bucket so we can provide like a token policy right add token bucket limiter and the properties also we need to change the first one is not a permit limit instead of that we can use token limit So this queue limit and queue processing both are fine. And the next one is replacement time period. Instead of the window, we can use this one. And the final one is token per period. So as I mentioned, it is similar to our sliding limiter. So in this sliding limiter, we are using these segments per window. 
so here we are using tokens per window okay let me save everything and we can copy this policy let me include in our minimal api so first time it is returning the data second time it is throwing any error and we are waiting some time okay so in case if i am providing this queue limit have some values it won't throw any error you know it will wait and it will return the data so it will wait for the particular time period then it will return the data so it's not going to return any error okay great now almost we have completed all of our topics now we are in the end of the video so the main idea of the rate limiter is managing number of request see if you don't have this rate limiter the particular site or api the application hitting more request so it is automatically saying unresponsive or else you may see the messages like a key pages the page is not supporting or else it's loading like that we will get the comments so instead of that we are just holding so we are setting the limit in case we are getting more requests automatically we are throwing an error message okay that's all about the concept still if you have any doubts or clarification please post in the comment box and also please don't forget to subscribe my channel so in my next video we can see minimal api with the complete detail thank you thanks for watching